Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Hello, universe. Who's out there listening? Today is what I'm going to call the completion of the quartet of perceiving, knowing, being, and today is receiving. If you haven't already listened to the Perceiving, Knowing, and Being podcasts that have already been released, I might recommend to go back and start with Perceiving. They compound on one another. These Perceiving, Knowing, Being, and Receiving audios were actually a something that I recorded for a free membership that I was doing a couple of years ago. So if you listen to this and you feel like you've heard it, it's because you were on the free membership. But those of you guys that were not, these weren't available to the public until now. So please enjoy. Please get that these elements of perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving are literally the building blocks for consciousness. If you want more consciousness, more freedom, more awareness, you must always reference, begin from perceiving, knowing, being, and then the greatest, biggest mystery of receiving, which are not things we're taught. It's not you know, demonstrated in popular society or private society or familiar familial society. So I sometimes feel like throwing out these words like perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving is like throwing a grain of sand into a tsunami. It like really doesn't make a huge difference. And for those of you guys that can hear this and will receive the magnitude of the impact of perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. I am grateful for you. And how's it get better than this? Enjoy. Hello, everybody out there. I feel sometimes like I'm doing a university thesis, um, and especially today on the topic of receiving. Receiving is an interesting one in that I... um, we have the least vocabulary to describe and talk about receiving. So they, the perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving grow incrementally more difficult to understand and incrementally more powerful in their essence and what it is that they achieve in our beings and in the universe. So all of your projections, expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments, wow, of receiving. (laughs) Will you revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create? All of that. Thank you. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, hands. Um, And what, what have you misidentified and misapplied receiving as? What have you misidentified and misapplied receiving as? So everything that that is, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine. Oof, thank you. Pod, puck, shirts, boys and beyonds. Oh, that's very strong. <laughs> what have you misidentified and misapplied receiving as? So all of the points of view, judgments, misap- mass- misapplications and misidentifications of receiving that you bought from others cognitively and and non-cognitively, will you destroy and uncreate it all, please? All of that. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys, and beyonds. And everywhere that you think that receiving means that everything comes to you the way you want it, will you destroy and uncreate? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys, and beyonds. So when we're talking about consciousness and we're talking about changing our lives or having our lives be easier, greater, um, which is ultimately what a lot of these conversations are about is to start to access what's possible with life that isn't the effort, the struggle, the trauma, the drama, the story, the conclusion, the judgment that so many of us use in our lives that are actually, that's actually destroying the po- are the possibilities in our lives destroying what the universe can be for us in our life and definitely not receiving. And so 
when we're talking about perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving, it's like a formula. You can't really have one without the other. And to get to receiving, your perceiving and knowing and being have to also be very substantial. So everywhere that you have been, everywhere that you gave up receiving because you didn't want to be it, will you destroy and uncreate all this place? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, meons. And what is it you decided you never wanted to receive? So everything that you decided that you never wanted to receive or wasn't fun to receive or hurt too much to receive or wasn't pleasant to receive, will you begin now to destroy and uncreate all those decisions and conclusions? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, meons. It's like we, it's, Receiving is an interesting one, like um, awareness, in that if you decide you don't want to be aware of something, um, and I deal with this a lot and talk to the entities, when you decide, like when someone decides they don't want to be aware of ghosts or spirits in some way, you don't just lose the awareness of that one thing. You actually lose this entire portion of your being. And so it also, that that also is the same with receiving. If there's something that you don't want to receive, like um, if you don't want to receive your how aware you are, if you don't want to receive judgment, if you don't want to perceive and receive how angry or insane somebody is, if you don't want to receive being abused, et cetera, like the negative things, if you don't want to receive that stuff, it actually ends up cutting off all receiving because receiving isn't selective. It's all or nothing. There's no like turn, there's no volume button on receiving, which is I think where most of us lose the whole kit and caboodle of receiving is with that first decision of, oh, this is too much to receive, whatever that was. So whatever, whatever that initial point of view in this lifetime, when you were a baby, what, whatever age you were, when you begin to cut off receiving as a way of surviving your awareness of reality. Shall we destroy that create some of that now, please? Since you're all grown up. Okay, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. And receiving then becomes a difficult conversation because people like only want to receive the good stuff and not receive the bad stuff, which, I mean, I think that sounds obvious. Like who wants to receive bad stuff? Except when you then take it a step further, who determines and judges what's good and what's bad? And as soon as you go into good or bad, both of which are judgments, you lose receiving. So all of the judgments that you're using to eliminate the receiving, you could be choosing. Will you revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shirts, boys and beyonds. Okay, so what is receiving? So I'm not going to give you a dictionary definition of receiving. I'd like to bring your attention more to nature. So do, do plants and trees receive? And so you have to look at what is it that the plants and the trees are receiving. Now, the plants and the trees receive sunshine, rain, pollution, being cut down, but also growing with nature. And when they receive sunshine, rain, so on and so forth, they also then start being, they generate, they generate and give back. So when trees receive, they also gift. And that's another, that's what receiving actually is. When you receive, so shall you gift. And so Everywhere that you believe that receiving is a one-way street to you, (laughs) rather than a cycle of gifting and receiving or a uh, simultaneous gifting and receiving, everywhere you're unwilling to be the gift and therefore must eliminate receiving. Wow. Boof. Mm -hmm. Will you guys destroy and create, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shirts, boys and beyonds. So if you're unwilling to be the gift that you are or recognize that you are a gift, 
that eliminates receiving. Now, why would you want to receive? Okay. I, when I first heard this perceiving, no vegan receiving thing that Gary started talking about a really long time ago, it sounded like a good idea, but I had no idea what it was. I really didn't. And it took me a lot of years of continuing to get more conscious, studying access, utilizing it, applying it and facilitating it to really start to get, oh my gosh, this is being, this is perceiving, this is knowing, oh, and this is receiving. And so I didn't really know what receiving was. And so I started asking the universe, like, okay, please show me receiving. Please show me what this receiving stuff is. And I started to see it in these really weird areas and places that it was like this essence or this glimmer that was starting to come through me. And so you have to recognize that like receiving is everywhere and it's your choice that determines your level of receiving. And like if a tree stopped receiving, what would happen to it? It would die. And what's going, and I'm going to ask a very tough, unpleasant question, what's happening to you? Are you thriving or do you, is your, are you dying? Sorry, sorry for the tough question. <laughs> but we need to, I really need to emphasize the reality of, and the vitality of receiving, number one. And what's so cool and one of the ways in which Gary really has popularized receiving is by talking about like, you don't have a money problem, you have a receiving problem. And that really shocks people. And when you first start hearing about it, it's like, when I first started hearing about, you don't have a money problem, you have a receiving problem. I was like, yeah, okay. But I don't even know what receiving problem means. I don't even know what receiving problem means. And so I really set forth to whatever it was going to look like and whatever it was going to take, I had to get more receiving and be more receiving and choose more receiving. So a tool for those of you guys that do want to cultivate more receiving um, is number one, you want to start asking the universe, like, show me receiving, show me what it is, show me receiving. So you can identify and actually perceive and know what receive and know receiving. And then what's it going to take for me to receive more is the very basic question. However, if you then put all your expectations on what receiving more should look like and be like, you're going to kill receiving. As soon as you start judging, you stop receiving, which I feel like I'm putting very simply, but is absolutely that simply that simple and effect and and has that much of an effect. As soon as you judge, you stop receiving. You also stop perceiving, knowing, and being. So judgment is like toxic and lethal. Okay? All the judgments that you have of you, of others, that eliminate perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving as the simple superpower that you have available to you with ease, Will you revoke, recant, or send, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create all of those judgments, please? Right, mom, get bad all night and pad puck shirts, boys and beyonds. Okay, you guys. So you can revoke, recant, or send, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate judgments. Right, wrong, good, bad, all night, pad puck shirts, boys and beyonds. And then also choose to not judge. <laughs> Your mission if you choose to accept it. Number two question, what's what's it going to take for me to receive more? Okay. Now, when you're asking what's it going to take for me to receive more, that might, that also includes receiving more awareness, receiving more judgment, receiving more abuse, receiving more contribution from the universe. Receiving more means everything, not just the stuff you've determined and decided is right, good, perfect, and correct. Now, how many of you guys believe somewhere in your universe or think that Receiving will lead to abuse. So all that is, will you destroy and then create it all, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And everywhere that you have received abuse and decided that's the last time you're ever going to receive, let's shut the door on all receiving ever again. Will you destroy and create all those conclusions, all those judgments, 
that you ever came to in any lifetime. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds, and recognize that now I can't make it okay. I can't make it okay for you to receive. I can't make receiving judgment okay for you. That's something you really have to look at for yourself. And what I found, what I have found in receiving more is that I receive more of everything, meaning the good stuff and the hard, the easy stuff and the hard stuff, the magnificent ease filled abundance and gifting and the incredible insanity that lives in the, in the world amongst people as well. And as soon as I go into judgment of, I don't want to receive that. I don't want to perceive that. I don't want to be aware of that. I don't want to have that in my life. I lose all receiving. And this is what's really the the tough sell with receiving is that people are like, I don't want to receive that. But you have to remember, it's like, do trees have a, do trees have a point of view of what they receive or do they receive everything? Even the, even the toxicity in the soil, the being cut down. So sorry for the tough sell about receiving. I can't really sugarcoat that part. You're going to have to be willing to receive everything as just an interesting point of view. And everywhere that, everywhere that judging and protecting yourself Everywhere that you've determined or decided that judgment and protection is greater and stronger than perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving, will you destroy and uncreate, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So hopefully this starts to give you guys some groundwork or some keys to start to get what's going on for you and with receiving. And it's like, where did you, what is it you determined and decided you didn't want to receive? And that there is where you lost all receiving. Now, if you were willing to receive, let me put it like this. Now I'm going to say it, and this might seem theoretical initially. However, it's what's true. When you're willing to receive, when you ask for something, you receive it. So how many of you guys have been asking for stuff in your life more ease in your relationships, changing in your body, diff- changing in, changing your financial situation, and it hasn't really been showing up. When, you, when stuff doesn't show up that you've been asking for, it's the, the asking is one thing, okay? You must ask. Questions create. What's it going to take for me to change this? What's it going to take for me to have more ease with this? You must ask. The other part is receiving. You must be willing to receive that change. And how many conditions or criterias, expectations, and points of view have you guys put on what the changes in your life should look like? So all of the projections, expectations, separations, rejections, and judgments of what the things you've been asking for should look like when they show up, will you destroy and uncreate that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyond. And I sort of want to give you guys this awareness that if you're going to change, for example, your money stuff, and you've been asking for money to have more money, but you don't really like money, or you still have a lot of negative judgments of money, that judgment will prevent any and all receiving of anything that could be a different financial reality. Would you like a life of more ease, joy, abundance, and choice? Join Club Consciousness, my monthly consciousness membership, to get in shape for that life. One group call per month, plus processes, clearing loops, access to the closed secret shop, specials for just my members. Get clear on your life, create your life, enjoy your life. Welcome to Club Consciousness. Visit clubconsciousness.com to find out more thing that eliminates receiving is judgment. So you like the thing that sort of, okay, let me give you, I'm going to give you guys these, this story. Actually, when I, um, it's going to inspire some of you and frustrate others of you. I am. Um, when I first started checking out access, when I was in my late teens, I was living in New York city and I was going to art school in Brooklyn. And I, 
Gary used to come to New York and do these like spiritual new age fairs and he would run people's bars. And that's how we first started introducing people to access. And I had resisted access for all of my teens. He started doing access when I was 12 and I didn't, I wasn't into it for all of my teens. By the time I got into my late teens, I was really fucked up. I was super depressed and really lost and really in pain. And so, you know, he did his, he got me basically to try out access. And I went to this fair that he was doing um, in Midtown, which on 34th Street. And if any of you guys know Manhattan, 34th Street is like a freeway of people. It is such a busy part of the city. So I went to this fair that he was doing and I got my bars run and I cried during the session. It was, I had this like, I had quite a transformation. And it was whatever it was. I was a teenager. I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, but we finished and whatever, I packed up to head home. And um, I went outside and I mean, there were just so many people everywhere. And I'm walking to the subway and I see this woman on the side of the sidewalk and she's bent over looking at something. I look at what she's looking at on the ground and it's a checkbook with hundred dollar bills splaying out of it. And I walked over and I said to her, I was like, what's going on? And she looked at me with terror and said, I'm afraid of this. You handle it and left. And I mean, I'm standing there over this checkbook with like hundreds of hundred dollar bills splaying out of it. I'm standing there staring at it into the ground. And there are literally hundreds of people walking on either side of me. And I'm, no one's noticing. Literally, no one is paying attention. But welcome to New York City. And so I was like, I'll take it. So I picked it up and I put it in my backpack and I hustled home and I got home and I, and I pulled it out and I counted it. And I can't remember right now how much money it was, but it was like $900, something like that. And I was like, wow, that was interesting. And in the woman's name was in her checkbook, just her name and her address. And I think she lived in like Vermont or something. So I actually wrote her a letter and said, look, I found your checkbook with your money. And if you want this, here's my phone number, call me back. And I posted the letter and I waited weeks and weeks and she finally called me back. And I was like, and I actually still had the money. I had actually used $200 of of it to buy drugs. But she said, and it was amazing how this worked because I was like, yes, I still have your money. She was so grateful. She gave me her address to mail it back to her. And she said, you, why don't you keep $200 of it? I was like, wow, good, cool. Okay. So, um, That was this first sort of windfall of receiving that I didn't expect or understand at the time. But weeks later, I was having my bars run again by one of my dad's friend's clients. And it was late at night and she and I, she finished my bars and I went downstairs to the lobby to leave. And as I came out of the elevator directly across from me was a janitor's cart. And at the bottom, it was a clear plastic garbage bag on top of the janitor's cart. And in the bottom of the bag was this note this uh there was I think it was like a 20 or a 50 dollar note that was stuck to the bottom of the bag staring right at me when I got off the elevator so I poked a little hole in the bag and pulled out the bill and said thank you and walked off and I didn't really understand those experiences until I got older and really got more cognitive and conscious about receiving and realized that that was I was literally accessing more receiving by having my bars run in, I mean, I was 18. I was 18. I was 18. And that's how easy it is. That's how easy it can be. And I, and like, I was telling my friend, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, who's, um, he's working on the money come book. Uh, I, cause I did a, you know, I, I don't know. If a lot of you guys will know. And those of you that don't know, I did a year long money come class in 2018, I think, 2017. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember you guys. No, it must have been, two, must have been 2017. Anyways, um, he's turning it into a, he's turning that class into a book, which is very, but he, he basically kept, he, he kept telling me he, he came to a, um, he came to the body class I just did in Mumbai. And he was like, yeah, it's so funny. I was like cleaning out my office and I like found all this money. And I said to him, yeah, when money starts randomly showing up, you know, your level of receiving is increasing. And so it's this thing where when you're receiving increases, stuff just starts to show up as if by magic. And then your logic, your reason, and all your judgments get in the way of like, how did that happen? Or that can't be true, or it can't be easy. 
or this needs to be harder, or this is weird. So all of the, you know, all of the judgments and logic that you're using to block the receiving you could be choosing, you've got to get over that and let stuff and let, and let life and energy show up for you in the way in which it can, in the way in which it can. So all that that is to strain and create it, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, men. And then, so she goes on, Zale's question is, so, so yes, they were paying less and then I didn't choose. Okay, fine. You know, it's like, look, there's a lot of, the thing is, there's a lot of money in the world. And it's like, if you're not having the financial reality you want to be having, you have to look at your choices and you have to look at your points of view about money. Do you function from the reality and point of view that all of that money comes to you with ease, joy, and glory, and that money is ease, joy, and glory? Or do you function or have the point of view and the reality that money is difficult? To put it really simply, okay? So you, this question that you're asking, Zeal, about the asking to receive more and then getting, not getting offered the, the payment and salary that you want from the work, it's like, that involves a whole bunch of other things too, other than just asking to receive. It's like, you're actually going to, and that's the thing. It's like, when you start receiving more, what are you going to have to change in your own universe to actually allow that to come to you with ease, joy, and glory? So this is, this is sort of a huge conversation and people, I, I see people get very invested in the receiving conversation because they think it'll equal more money. And I guess, I guess that's the least that receiving more could do for you. So that's good. Um, and it's like, hopefully this conversation has given you some keys, some tools and some insights, but I don't want to minimize the amount of work that you're going to have to do to cultivate, to access and to have more receiving in your world as an easy choice. So this is just sort of like the... This is like not even the tip of the iceberg. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and recognize that receiving is a really big choice that will affect your entire universe and affect the entire universe. And as soon as you're thinking, that's not receiving. Judgment is not receiving, okay? So if you're in your head too much, that's not receiving. So those are just some guidelines for you to help you access greater receiving and what energy space and consciousness can you and your bodies be to perceive no be and receive with ease and everything that doesn't allow that will you destroy and create it right and wrong good and bad all nine pud puck shorts boys and beyonds keep running that process what energy space and consciousness can me and my body be to perceive no be and receive and everything that doesn't allow it to strain and create it, right? Long good battle, nine pud puck shorts, boys, men. And you never know. You just might find out. You, you just might find out more perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. And it never looks like what you think it's going to. So have the, have the experiment. Go on the journey of discovering what this stuff is. You're going to have to find out for yourself. That's the excitement of being conscious on this planet. You get to get more aware. You get to discover. You ha- get to have awareness knowledge, insight, perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. Oh, and I forgot to say in the very beginning that the lower harmonic of receiving is give and take. So if you're in give and take, what am I going to get for this? Like your question, Zeal, like like wanting a certain amount of money for your job, what am I going to get for this? So that's not receiving, that's give and take. The higher harmonic is gifting and receiving. Okay, now I... For whatever it's worth, I know that might be that might be frustrating, but you must recognize, you guys, that give and take is the lower harmonic of receiving. So if you're, what am I going to get for this? What do I have to give for this? That's give and take. Trees don't do give and take. Trees receive and gift. Okay, so if that's of any interest to you. Yeah, have fun with your tools. I hope you guys get that there's so much more that's possible. And it's like, look, this shit's powerful. Like when I, I'll tell you guys some other exciting, slightly and frustrating things. It's like when we did this money come class with all these, I did this money come class with all these people, whenever that was. And it was like within the first three months of the class, 
15 to 20 people had received this massive windfall of money and it freaked them out because that was more receiving. They had to be willing to up their level of receiving as well. So the funny thing is this actually works and it can be easy, but you have to really change your whole groundwork, your the whole framework and web work of, of the reality you have about money, about life, how life can show up, how things can come to you, what it means when things come to you, so on and so forth. So please, please come. Those of you guys that really have the courage and the interest to, to dive in, please come join the premium membership. Um, or if you don't do the premium membership now, it's like, get yourself to a bars class, get yourself to an access body class, get yourself to something that is utilizing these incredible tools of access. I cannot emphasize enough. Like you have, in order for this magic to actually occur, you have to use the tools and it's incredible how effective the tools are. So I double dog dare you guys. Thank you so much for being here. How does it get better? What's it going to take to receive more? And what's it going to take to have less conditions on what that receiving is? I love you guys. So thank you all so much. How does it get better? Ciao. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you.